Good morning, church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Tomorrow we start worship. We do in-house worship. But today I want us to look at a man and a woman. Is uh, this uh, husband and wife team are in the faith hall? They are in the hall of faith, chapter eleven in the Bible. And you see, the lady is the first woman that was in, inducted into the Hall of Faith in chapter 11 of Hebrews. But you see, the title of the message this morning is Consequences. You know, anything and everything that we do, there's always consequences. And sometimes the thing that we do is so small, you don't even realize it because it doesn't change your life. Nobody looks at you different. And so you just kind of let it slide and you maybe don't even pay any attention to it. But then there's times in our life when some of the things that we do, the consequences are, are forever, if you will. Even after we have passed, this, this, uh, passed on out of this world. And sometimes it affects not only us, but our families and their families as well. Now the Bible tells me that God came to Abraham and he said, Abraham, he said, I want you to move. Now, Abraham was a man of faith. He loved God. Also, too, Abraham was a very wealthy man, well-liked in his community. So I believe that when God told him to move, that he did. But you see, for Abraham to move is a lot different than me and you to move today. I have moved. I've helped other people move. And we just call them a move right? And then come and load everything up and take it to where it is that we are going. But for Abraham to move with all of his stuff, then it was quite an undertaking. But Abraham was going on God's promise. God promised him, he said, I will be there with you, I will lead you, I will take care of you, and I will make sure that you arrive where I want you to arrive. Now we know that Abraham's wife was Sarah. Now we know the Bible tells us that Sarah couldn't have any children. And at this day and age and in that culture that Sarah lived in, they was looked down upon as a curse from God if you couldn't have any children. Now and also too, I believe that her and Abraham both prayed. But I believe Abraham and Sarah got tired of waiting. You know, waiting is not one of our good things, is it? We, we don't like to wait very long. I've had people tell me, they said, you know, even at a stop sign, I can't hardly wait. I've got to go. I've got things to do and people to see and money to make, so I'm always in a hurry. But you see, I believe that Sarah got tired of waiting, so she took things into her own hand. Sometimes we kind of jump ahead of God as well, don't we? But you see, she encouraged Abraham to, to sleep with her maidservant. And the child that they was going to have would be, would be Sarah's. And there at the time, that was kind of a common practice. And nobody really looked down upon that. And also, too, there at the time, that looked like everything was going to work out all right. Everything was going to be good. Everything was going to be cool. But you see, after the baby came... Then the consequences set in, and oh, was they horrible. Now we know that the Bible tells us that Abraham and, and Sarah's son was Isaac. You know, names carry a great, a great authority, doesn't it? I mean, when you think of a name in the Bible, memories of that person come back. When you think of Noah, think about Noah. He, he built the ark, and he saved his family. David. David was a king, but the Bible said he was a man after God's own heart. Also, too, when you think of Peter, Peter was able to walk on water. And after he was empowered with the Holy Spirit, he was a very bold man. We know that Samuel was a prophet. And we know his mother, Hannah, couldn't have any children as well. And the Bible said that when she went to the temple, she prayed and she cried out to God. And she promised God if, if she could have a, a child, she would rededicate it back to Him. So, so yes, names, names really recall certain memories of that person. So when you think of Isaac, you've got to think of laughter. Because the Bible tells us that when God came to Abraham and Sarah, Sarah laughed. 
Not because she didn't think God could do it, but why would God choose her? She was 90. Abraham was above 100. Why would God allow them to have this joy of a child? But God did. And also, too, you see, Isaac was a, was a wonder child. Parents was 90 and 100. Also, too, Isaac was the first descendant of Abraham that God had promised him many. Let's read a scripture. It comes out of, of Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 through 14. Genesis 22, 1 through 14. Listen to the word. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and, uh, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes, saw the place afar off, and Abraham said to his young man, Stay here with the donkey, the lad, and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father? And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself for the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham had built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. So Abraham went, took the ram, offered it up for a burnt offering, and, and instead of his son. And Abraham called the, the name of the place, The Lord Will Provide. And as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you and praise you for your word. In Christ's name, amen. So you may ask yourself, why did God tempt Abraham? Did he want to see him fall? Did he want to see him stumble? Did he want to see him uh, do a complete turnaround? No, the reason that God tempted or tested tested Abraham was to, to help build his character. God wanted to shape and mold and melt Abraham into what he wanted Abraham to be so that he could be used. You know, just like fire uh, refines ore into precious metal. Now, church, sometimes we've got to go through the fire as well. Sometimes we got to go through the difficult times. We do. And you see, when we go through them, we can scream, yell, throw a hissy fit, throw ourselves on the floor, throw things, or we can back up a little bit and just look at the situation. And then we can ask God, okay, God, what is it? How are you trying to shape me? What are you trying to do in my life so I can do more for you? And we can allow God to shape us into what He wants us to be. Only if, only if we allow Him to do that. You see, Abraham had no idea when he got up that morning that he was going to, to do one of the greatest acts of obedience in all history. He was going to leave 
and go 50 miles to this mountain where God wanted him to go. And then the Bible tells us it was a three-day journey. And maybe up to then, maybe his obedience was a little lacking. Maybe God had asked him down through the years to do things, and he was a little bit slow. But the Bible said today, God spoke, he listened, and he done exactly what God wanted him to do. But you know, sometimes when God wants us to do things, we have to put the things that we want to do on the back burner. Things that we really, 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 really want to do. And things that we've been looking forward to and been planning for years. God may show up right at that time and say, I want you to do this. So how is our obedience? Do we jump upon it? Or do we stammer? Do we back up? Do we allow God to, to take care of our life? Or do we give Him excuses? Now, did you ever wonder why God would ask Abraham to sacrifice his son? Because during that time, and then he, the nations around him, God really come down hard on them when they sacrificed their children. God did not approve of that. But you see, God didn't want Abraham to sacrifice his son's life. He wanted him to sacrifice him in his heart. He wanted to see and have Abraham to see who he loved the most, God or his son. But you know, sometimes, sometimes it's hard to give up someone that we love or, or put somebody ahead of God because, because we want to be sure that we take care of that, don't we? We have a hard time turning it over to God and allowing God to do what God needs to, but we have to be the ones to let go. But sometimes it's tough, isn't it, to let go of someone that we love. But Abraham, Abraham knew, Abraham knew which one he loved and God did too. But did you notice the substitute for Isaac, the ram? God provided a substitute for Isaac. He did, that ram. But you see, the substitute for us was Christ. But God stopped Abraham. But God didn't stop his son from sacrificing his life for me and you. You see, if Christ had to die on the cross, we would have just died a death. And we would have had a spent eternity, eternity with, in hell. We would have. But since Christ died for us, then we can have eternal life. If only, if only we accept Him as Lord and Savior. Now one thing too, blessings. You know, when we think, when we think that God gives us blessings that are just for us. But you see, as you see in the scripture, God blessed Abraham and it was for everybody. Everybody. In the same way with us. God wants our blessings that He gives us to overflow over into others. So, my question today, church, is consequences. Whatever you do, remember there's going to be consequences. Regardless, there is. But do you have something that you're holding on to? Do you have something that you cannot turn over to God? Abraham was tested. And I believe God tests each and every one of us. Not to get us to fall, but He tests us to see if we will see and know who we are. Are we a product of God? Do we love God? Or do we... Let's get the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we thank You and praise You. Lord, You're awesome. Guide us and direct us, Lord. But also too, Lord, let us, let us, be able to do a fruit check. To be able to see what it is in our heart. Who is in our heart? Are you number one priority? Or have we got many other things that we put ahead of you? Lord, you're awesome and we love you. In Christ's name, amen.